When you start off, nobody wants you. You're just a damn nuisance. Just another kid who's wanting to go on the stage. And probably not very good either. I mean, if you want to be an actor, you'll be an actor. If you think you might like to be an actor, you won't be an actor. I mean, you've got to actually desperately want it. Unless there is nothing, nothing, nothing else on earth that will satisfy you, don't do it. You've got to actually be prepared to put acting or the theatre or uh, getting a job before anything else. I had no idea of the difficulties and the problems ahead, just none. You don't know about life when you're 17. I think something like the rep, certainly National Youth Theatre, is that they have connections to professionals that enlighten you about what the industry is and what it's like and the hard, how hard it can be. When I sit in casting sessions, 90% of the people we see we probably don't want and aren't right. So I feel that if you are one of the lucky few who has that natural talent, you will break through if you are passionate enough about it. You know, you can't sort of let yourself run away with it because you know, come the end of the run, you're back to square one, essentially, um, and you have to look for work again. Casting directors, agents, producers, directors are much more accessible than they used to be. You know, back in the day it was you'd send hard copy letters and hope that it would arrive on the desk. Actually now, more often than not, you can get access to a casting director's email. The things that he was extraordinary at were being almost an outsider, which actually was sort of what he was. He was most proud of working with people and making a great team and looking after them, the team of the theatre, and brought us up like that. that it isn't just the actors. In fact, the actors are just the, you know, icing. It's what's behind, what's behind, what's behind it? and from the cutters of the clothes to the, you know, it's, why should, and I remember him saying, why should anybody do anything for you unless you look after them? Why? You know, it, it's a tough, but practical. He was actually at the top of his career. He really was. I was in a series and he came in as the guest, the visiting guest. And within a few minutes, he'd learnt everyone's name, all the crew, the cameraman, the sound guy. He was exactly the same. It was the same kind of feeling of we're all together making this. In our business, reputations always go before you. And I have never heard a bad word said against him. Everybody loved him. The people who have been to the theatre schools have a better, feel more confident in themselves and actually that, that's a, that is an advantage but I mean obviously it all costs money. Talent is talent wherever you might find it and I think we're almost coming full circle where I, you know, have a huge respect for drama schools. But the reality is that, you know, some really talented young actors can't afford £10,000, £15,000 a year in tuition fees, plus the living expenses being in London, no matter how much they'd love to. We've been so lucky that we've had the chance to have nine months training and learning about theatre with professionals and doing it on the West End for three months. That's unheard of now. Drama schools, I think you get a week, a show. The three month run that we do at the end of the rep company is when I learned the most, funnily enough. It was, it was completely amazing and learning from your peers as well, learning from people that are in the same boat as you. With rep, we worked with people like the Royal Court and the National and Nihai, all these amazing companies. BBC came in and did radio with us and we got like tasters of everything that drama school might give you. That was, that was completely invaluable to me, that was amazing. And it was because of the vocational um, industry sort of geared training um, that I don't think I would have gotten if uh, I 
trained anywhere else. I'm not going to give somebody a job because they went to RADA or, or they didn't go to RADA or, or any of the other theatre schools. I think it provides you with discipline and a great opportunity to make mistakes. Actors now learn their craft in television. Various soap operas that go out five nights a week that demand and eat up and give actors their first jobs. I think that's where people now learn their craft. You have to be open to not, they're not being a straight route. You don't have to go to drama school, you don't have to do the rep company. Some people will come out and they will work straight away. Um, I think that's the way, the, the way of the land now is that there's much less of a path. First of all, learning the rudiments of your job. First of all, trying to fashion some weapons with which to fight, by which I mean technique. These are the elementary problems that any actor faces. When you say there are 30,000 equity members unemployed at any one moment, and he's getting fed up, you know, um, the thing is that they've got other jobs. Anyone, to my mind, who actually earns his living totally as an actor is a successful actor. Otherwise, you're playing at it, you know. Finding the work uh, really is one of the biggest challenges and, and looking at a way to survive as an actor and realising that acting isn't just an episode on, on television or a part in a play, that it could be voicing a video game. But I sort of had the assumption that I'd do the company and went really well, had a brilliant time, best year of my life, and I'd come out and I'd start working. And I had a good nine months of rejection, of just getting close, no, not getting close, just auditioning and being told no at every single corner and it gets really heartbreaking and gets really, really difficult. The ability to make money from your voice is certainly the, a growth that I've seen over the last maybe 10 years. I know actor friends of mine that have literally turned their spare box rooms into soundproof recording studios because actually a job a day is coming in to do voiceovers. Now, whether that's a voiceover for online golfing or, you know, an online gambling site or a window company, that piece of work can be done from the home, pays them a, a weekly, a daily income that then allows them to, to dash off in the afternoon and, you know, go to that interview over in Manchester or in London. Agents, I had no agent or anything like that. They, they were awfully nice. They were, oh, agents are awfully nice. Actually. They'd say, lovely, lovely, dear boy. Come back in 10 years and I think we might be able to use you. I said, well, I could have starved to death in 10 years. And it was literally about 10 years before I got an agent. How do we find our actors? We find our actors because our casting directors send out a brief for a start to agents. So you kind of need to be in the communication chain in order to know that we're auditioning in the first place. I think where actors let themselves down is that they will generically send bulk emails in the hope that some, some of it will stick or, or be picked up. If you get yourself in as much as you can, do loads of fringe theatre, things like that, just get yourself in something that an agent can see. Directors would have seen you work, managers would have seen you, and so uh, when they were casting a play, they would think of you. I think it's about doing your research and knowing that actually the agent that you're with is a reputable one and has access to, to stuff that you don't, I guess. Otherwise, you may as well be doing it yourself. Personally, I'm a massive fan of actor co-ops because I think it's a very interesting place where you have a hand in your own career whilst understanding the nature of the industry at any one time. <laughs> I think it's what can you do that nobody else is doing and don't presume that you're working you're the hardest working actor out there it's like when people say to me do I need to learn the lines to come into the audition I go that's completely down to you I don't judge somebody on learning their lines or not but if you don't the person after you will have done on free reign which is the show we've just made for Netflix we were desperate to find um, a character who was sort of nicknamed the Moody Horse Boy. In the week before we got to the read-through, we had two actors who turned up in the room who we liked, and we had Freddie who arrived on a self-tape. We watched him at the end of the day on a computer, and he came in the next day and auditioned with our lead actress and got the role. To be able to send somebody the script and have them self-tape for you means that somebody is able to audition from the comfort of 
their own living room and you are opening up the pool of actors that you're able to consider which is something that you wouldn't have had time to do years ago. I think there is a danger that some actors come into an audition and think it's all about them. It's not all about you. It's about how do you uh, portray that character and how do you become the person we, we most want portraying that character. So someone who comes in and keeps going, oh, I've messed that up, oh, and it becomes about me, the person, rather than me, the actor, who can be professional. You can say, oh, I'm really sorry, I think I just made a mistake there, can I do it again? That's fine. But we don't need all the emoting that goes with it. Actually, for many of our directors, it's if I'm stuck doing a night shoot with this person for 14 hours, are they going to be the kind of person at the end of the day that is going to be keeping everybody going? Are they the sort of person I'm going to want to go for a drink with at the end of the day? If you're auditioning and you're constantly flicking your hair or shaking your head or there are tricks which become very boring to watch quite quickly and and we spot them, you need to be still and natural and inhabit your character it sounds obvious but you would be amazed at how many people leave an audition room and we look at each other and go (laughs) patience and resilience that's what you need to be an actor because it's not going to come Quickly. It certainly hasn't come quickly for me. Acting is as much about natural talent as about what you can learn or what someone can teach you. And in some ways you've either got that or you haven't. It's a hell of a profession, I think. I think it's a very difficult one. I think it's one that attracts a whole lot of people who shouldn't be in it at all. And therefore, the more difficult you make it, the better it is. If you get a job, you've got the research you have to put into doing that job. It's a period drama, learn about that time. You have to develop a whole entire new person to inhabit and really become and do it truthfully. You have to work with everyone else. You have to learn your lines. That takes ages. You've got to read and read and read. So I think it's really looking at how you can stretch your own skills and being really proactive if you want to stay in this career because it isn't for somebody who's faint-hearted or who thinks they'd like to try it, you know, give it a try and see how they get on. You've got to be prepared to have a, a little grip pack with two pairs of underpants, get on any bus anywhere, to any job and do it which one was for many years. There will be times, however good you are, where you might need to just get a job uh, in between, um, but still make yourself available for interviews. To actors that are in their teens that are at school and things like that, I'd I'd really recommend them to try everything that they can in youth theatres, local um, local sort of exhibitions, live art, um, anything that they can get a, a sort of taste or an experience in it and to try to do as many different things as possible. The only advice I can give you is just don't stop, you have to just keep going, however hard it is. You know, talent's very common, but actually, have you got the right nature? Have you got this sort of, you know, I think it is, as Shakespeare says, oh, perseverance, you know. Have you got that? Because that will see you through. The other bit, I think you have to be really confident in yourself and your ability and your talent and sort of delude yourself that you're amazing and tell yourself that you're great, because no one else is going to tell you. It had better be a way of life, which in itself, just to belong to it, just to strive, is enough. Which means you're not going to make a lot of money, and you're going to be out of work an awful lot of time, but it's just got to be something you want above anything else in the world you want to do. Then, go to it, and you have my full encouragement. I really hate talking about this business as business, and I really hate it when people start using business speak. But unfortunately, even I have to remember, sometimes it is a business. And that's sort of what we're all doing. It is, ultimately, it's not a hobby. What is acting? I mean, what actually is the art? Why, why should they say that you can act and I can't? It's just so many people sitting there going, he's good. Oh, he's no good, but why why should they? You know, it's it's such a stupid business. I mean, uh, if you're a musician, you can either play the instruments or not. I mean, you've got annotations, you've got things that you can actually do. I mean, what is acting? I don't know. It's ludicrous business. 